The Nobel Prize is rich with scandal. The prestigious awards are known to divide opinion, and the winner's list is often clouded in controversy. Last year has been no different. The latest set of Nobel laureates, announced in October, has been mired in accusations of genocide denial, sexual abuse and Eurocentric bias. Founded in 1895, the Nobel Prize has no paucity of shocking secrets and despot laureates. Previous winners include an apologist for ethnic cleansing, a prominent eugenicist, and an LSD-addled biochemist with a love of astrology and alien encounters. From Soviet repression to sexual assault, here are 13 shocking facts about the Nobel Prize. Fritz Haber, the father of chemical warfare. Fritz Haber is among the most controversial Nobel Prize recipients. Some view him as a brilliant chemist who revolutionized the production of ammonia. Others see him as the vile figure who oversaw Germany's program of chemical warfare during World War I. Haber was born to a Jewish family in the Prussian city of Breslau, now part of Western Poland. Around the turn of the 20th century, he and his colleague Karl Bosch developed an innovative method to synthesize ammonia gas. Ammonia is a vital component for producing fertilizer, and the Haber-Bosch process is still widely used in agriculture. Around half of the global food supply depends on Haber's brilliant method. The process has saved billions of people from starvation. For this remarkable achievement, Haber was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1918. Bosch received his in 1931. When the First World War broke out, Haber devoted his research to developing chemical weapons for the German army. As head of the chemistry section at the German Ministry of War, he spearheaded the use of chlorine gas in trench warfare, earning him the unenviable title of father of chemical warfare. Chlorine gas is a ruthless weapon, designed to slaughter enemy troops without mercy. The gas creeps over no man's land, pushed on by the wind, before sinking down into the opposing trench and suffocating those inside. In total it is estimated that over a million World War I soldiers lost their lives to chemical gas attacks. Haber also demonstrated how ammonia could be oxidized to produce nitric acid, the main compound used to produce explosives. Peter Handke, an accused genocide apologist. The Nobel Prize in literature is notorious for dividing opinion. Often the controversy is a matter of literary taste. Readers feel that the chosen laureate was unworthy or that a more talented writer has been overlooked by the committee. The outrage over Peter Handke runs deeper than artistic opinion. The Austrian playwright is accused of supporting Milosevic's genocidal regime during the Bosnian Wars. A proud nationalist, Hanke has publicly denied the events of the Srebrenica genocide. The ethnic cleansing of Srebrenica is remembered as the largest case of mass murder in Europe since the Second World War. Over 7,000 Bosnian Muslims were brutally massacred in 1995 by Bosnian Serb forces, an atrocity Hanke claims never happened. Hanke is also accused of spreading controversial opinions about the siege of Sarajevo. Writing in the 1990s, he suggested that the Muslims in Sarajevo were not massacred by Milosevic's troops, instead they slaughtered themselves and blamed the Serbs to incite further hatred. Hanke's receipt of the 2019 prize has been met with outrage from writers and activists across the globe. Salman Rushdie, Slavoj Žižek and Jennifer Egan are among those who have condemned the Nobel Committee's decision. Egan, an avid campaigner on human rights, described feeling dumbfounded by the selection of a writer who has used his public voice to undercut historical truth and offer public succor to perpetrators of genocide. At a moment of rising nationalism, autocratic leadership, and widespread disinformation around the world, the literary community deserves better than this. Carrie Mullis, the narcotic astrologer. An LSD advocate with passionate beliefs in astrology, Kerry Mullis was an unconventional Nobel Prize winner. In 1993, he shared the award with Michael Smith for their landmark discoveries in the field of DNA research. Mullis played a pivotal role in developing the technique known as polymerase chain reaction. This brilliant invention allows scientists to create millions of duplicates of a DNA molecule. PCR is considered to be one of the most significant breakthroughs of the 20th century, used in everything from fossil analysis to criminal identification. Mullis was an outlandish, controversial figure who held little regard for academic expectations. Until his death in August 2019, the Californian maverick had a reputation for experimenting with LSD. This affinity for narcotics may explain some of his more unorthodox beliefs. Mullis was highly skeptical of the connection between HIV and AIDS, and a staunch advocate of astrology. 
But perhaps most bizarre of all was his claim to have been abducted by a glowing alien raccoon. Despite his eccentricities, the Nobel Committee still considered him worthy of the prestigious accolade. Agus Monas, inventor of the lobotomy. By modern standards, the lobotomy is an obsolete medical practice that feels more like a medieval torture method than a form of psychiatric treatment. However, in the early half of the 20th century, the procedure was celebrated as a state-of-the-art treatment for mental illness. In the US around 20,000 people underwent the operation, in which the prefrontal cortex is cut to sever connections in the brain. Portuguese neurologist Agas Monas first introduced the technique in the mid-1930s. Following preliminary tests on a group of schizophrenia sufferers, he remarked that it was simple operation, all was safe. He was soon proven wrong. A number of patients suffered irrevocable personality damage after undergoing the procedure. Some were reduced to listless childlike beings, a handful fell into a vegetative state. In light of the high-risk side effects, lobotomies are now widely viewed as highly amoral. Moniz was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1949 for developing the controversial procedure. At that point very little scientific research had been conducted into lobotomies. The side effects were relatively unknown. Some historians argue that Moniz's receipt of the Nobel Prize legitimized the procedure. They believe that the prestigious award helped bolster the popularity of lobotomies. A number of appeals have been made to the Nobel Committee to rescind his award, but they refuse to do so. Instead, the committee argues that there is no reason for indignation at what was done in the 1940s, as at that time there were no other alternatives. Soviet Repression Boris Pasternak, the Russian author behind Dr. Zhivago, was announced as the winner of the 1958 Nobel Prize in Literature. Originally his novel had been rejected by Soviet publishers for spreading malicious libel of the USSR, however it soon found popularity outside of the country. The US, who were locked in a battle with Stalin's government, seized Pasternak's book as an opportunity for anti-Soviet propaganda. The CIA bought and circulated copies across the globe as a cultural weapon against a socialist state. While Pasternak was overjoyed at his accolade from the Nobel Committee, the Soviet Union took a very different view. Newspaper articles denounced Pasternak as a literary weed. The Soviet government, now under the rule of Nikita Khrushchev, pressured his contemporaries into shunning him. When he was threatened with being banished from the USSR if he accepted, Pasternak was forced to turn down the prize. Alexander Solzhenitsyn faced similar repression when he was awarded the 1970 prize in literature. The Russian writer, a staunch critic of the Soviet Union, was denied travel to Oslo to receive his award and expelled for treason four years later. Sexual Assault and Financial Misconduct in 2018, Jean-Claude Arnault was hit by a barrage of serious accusations relating to sexual assault and financial misconduct. The 72-year-old, one of Sweden's leading cultural figures, faced charges of assault, abuse and sexual harassment. Swedish newspaper Dagens Nyheter published accusations from 18 women against Arnault. Further evidence emerged that he and his wife Katarina, a member of the Swedish Academy Board, had leaked the names of several prize winners in advance. The scandal around Arnaud became so severe that the Nobel Committee were forced to cancel that year's literature prize. Prior to the scandal, Arnaud had arrogantly boasted of being the unofficial 19th member of the Academy Board. He was convicted of rape in October 2018 and is currently serving a two-year prison sentence. Alexis Carroll, surgeon and eugenicist. Alexis Carroll was a remarkable biologist. The Frenchman was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine in 1912 for his groundbreaking research into transplant surgery. Just three years later, in the midst of World War I, he developed an innovative method for treating wounds with antiseptic. But in the decades that followed, Carroll's research took a dark and sinister turn. In 1935 Carroll published the book, Man the Unknown, in which he explains his support for eugenics. He was of the opinion that women with desirable characteristics should focus exclusively on reproducing with desirable men and then mothering their desirable children. He also believed that undesirable people should discourage from reproducing and that criminals deserve to be humanely and economically disposed of in gas chambers. Daniel Carlton Gadjusek, Perverse Criminal Born in New York, Daniel Carlton Gadjusek shared the 1976 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work into the spread of infectious disease. The esteemed physician was a leading figure in the study of degenerate brain disorders. 
While researching the Four tribe in New Guinea, Gadjasek was the first to attribute a local nervous system disease to a ghastly ritual of eating human brains. He was also praised for his bountiful generosity. Gadjasek adopted around 50 impoverished children from the Pacific Islands and personally funded their education in the U.S. However in 1997, Gadjasek's cherished reputation crashed suddenly to earth. The Nobel Prize-winning physician faced allegations of sexually abusing underage boys. Two of the students sponsored by Gadjasek, a young man from Micronesia and another too young to be identified, claimed they were assaulted while in the researcher's care. When brought to trial, Gadjasek pleaded guilty to abuse and molestation and was imprisoned for a year. Aung San Suu Kyi, Apologist for Ethnic Cleansing The Nobel Peace Prize has a long history of controversial recipients. Henry Kissinger, Barack Obama, and the European Union to name a few. In recent years, a debate has been sparked around Aung San Suu Kyi, the Myanmar politician who became a Peace Prize laureate in 1991. In 2018, the United Nations published a damning report detailing some of the atrocities committed by Myanmar's military. UN investigators found that soldiers are brutally persecuting an ethnic group known as the Rohingya Muslims. Their heinous actions include mass killings and gang rapes. The army's extreme crackdown on the state of Rakhine has left tens of thousands of Rohingya Muslims dead. A further 700,000 have fled the violence, most of them sheltering as refugees in Bangladesh. As leader of the Myanmar government, Aung San Suu Kyi has faced criticism for supporting this vicious regime of ethnic cleansing. Nonetheless, the Nobel Committee refuses to revoke her prize. William Shockley, White Supremacist William Shockley revolutionized the world of technology. In 1956, the American physicist set up the first silicon semiconductor laboratory in Mountain View, California, the area now known as Silicon Valley. That same year, Shockley was awarded the Nobel Prize for his role in the invention of the transistor, arguably the most important scientific breakthrough of the last century. Transistors are one of the key components of computers and mobile phones, without them the internet would be unable to function. Shockley's enormous scientific impact is undeniable. But, despite his genius, he was also a fervent white supremacist. In his later years, Shockley was obsessed with the idea of a disparity in IQ between different races and decided to turn his hand to eugenics. Believing white people to be intellectually superior, he proposed that genetically disadvantaged people should be given financial incentives to persuade them to be sterilized. Joshua Lederberg. There is a long, not-so-proud history of Nobel Prizes awarded to men in place of their female colleagues. Perhaps one of the most egregious is Joshua Lederberg, awarded the in 1958 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for research he conducted with his first wife, microbiologist Esther Lederberg. Esther Lederberg discovered a virus that infects bacteria and, with her husband, developed a way to transfer bacteria between Petri dishes. Their first experiments used the powder puff from her compact to pick up and deposit bacteria in a lab dish. Today, scientists still use a similar technique to study antibiotic resistance. For all of her contributions, she did not share the Nobel Prize with her husband, who mentioned her only once in his Nobel lecture. James Watson. The co-discoverer of the structure of DNA doesn't miss an opportunity to offend. During a lecture at Berkeley, he suggested there are biochemical links between sexual libido and skin color, and between body weight and ambition. He declared in an interview that some anti-Semitism is justified. He never gave credit to Rosalind Franklin, whose work with X-ray crystallography made his discovery possible, though he made it a point to criticize her appearance and taste in clothing. Just when it seemed there were no more lines to cross, Watson declared himself inherently gloomy about the prospect of Africa, because all our social policies are based on the fact that their intelligence is the same as ours, whereas all the testing says not really. In a fit of peak and self-pity, Watson auctioned off his Nobel Prize medallion in 2014 for $4.1 million. He is the only laureate to have done so. Johannes Fibiger. Danish scientist Johannes Fibiger won the 1926 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for discovering what he thought was a cancer-causing parasite, a bold idea that turned out to be phenomenally wrong. Fibiger studied wild rats with warty growths, which Fibiger believed was a form of cancer caused by parasitic worms. His Nobel Prize was awarded with the declaration that these findings were the greatest contribution to experimental medicine in our generation. Only, it wasn't. While it's true that some infections can lead to cancer, his rat's disease wasn't caused by parasites. It wasn't even cancer. 
The warty bumps in the rat's stomachs were actually caused by a vitamin A deficiency, exacerbated by the parasites. Why the Nobel? The dawn of the microbial age was at the end of the 19th century, and he was in the early 20th century, says Stanford professor of epidemiology Julie Parsonet. People were very excited about this possibility that infections caused everything. And it certainly didn't hurt that Fibiger had friends on the Nobel Committee. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, please hit the like button. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. And if you have something to say, please leave a comment. See you.